So in this video I'm going to explain you how to uh, install and how to configure an HTCV 8.8 module uh, like this one or like the one that you have in the modular synthesizer behind me. What is the HTCV 8.8? It's a complete solution made of this RM module uh, which is uh, an interface between RTP MIDI uh, network and uh, CV gate output. Uh, the, this solution also includes a, a complete set of softwares uh, like VST plugins and Max MSP externals, uh, which can be run on an external computer uh, to control uh, the HDV88. But the thing is that the HDCV88 has been designed as a complete uh, synthesizer control module. Because the processor, which is uh, used on the CPU module inside the HTCV 8.8, is uh, very powerful and it has the capability to generate in completely standalone all control voltages uh, like uh, ADSR or LFOs. So uh, basically, the HTCV 8.8 is far more than a simple uh, network to CV gate uh, interface. Uh, concerning the uh, capability of the, the device, you have eight gate outputs which you can assign to any kind of signals, which means that you do not necessarily need to uh, generate gate signals for, for, ex for example, triggering RD ADSR uh, modules, but it can be used also to generate uh, signals like clocks or run-stop run signals uh, to control an external uh, step sequencer, for example. The second thing uh, is that you have eight CV outputs. But the most important thing is that these outputs are 16 bits resolution, even under MIDI mode. That means that you don't need a specific protocol to get an access to 16 bit resolution, uh, thanks to RTP MIDI uh, capabilities. So, uh, you can produce any signals with a very, very high resolution uh, through the RTP MIDI uh, connection uh, from external signals like what we are going to show in some of the videos with Maximus Field, for example, or uh, locally. But if you want it, since RTP MIDI is a completely open protocol, you can access to the low layer of internal software and you can perfectly generate all the signals uh, directly by yourself and you can control each output directly by yourself. Installing the HDCV88 in a synthesizer is quite easy uh, because we are only using the power supply. Uh, if you connect the HDCV88 to a frac rack system, there is no risk to make an error because there is a key on the frac rack uh, connector. But if you intend to connect the HDCV88 in a Euro rack synthesizer, then you have to take care to uh, the following points. The first thing is that there is no key on the back plane, so you have to make sure that you do not put the connector in the wrong way, which could damage the HDCV88. The second point to take into account is that if you look to uh, the A100 backplane, you can find two kinds of connectors. The 16 pins version that you see here, which is the complete version, and there is also a simplified version with only 10 pins, with only minus 12 and plus 12 volts connection. So, uh, the only difference between the two is that the simplified version uses the bottom 10 pins. Uh, so, uh, if you intend to use uh, the HDCV88 with a backplane with a 16-pin connection, then you have to uh, use a, a connector like this with a 16-pin uh, connector on one side and a 10-pin connector on the other side. So, we can install the uh, connector on the back plane and we take care that the bottom pins with a power supply are located on the same side uh, than the 10-pin uh, uh, connector on the other end of the cable. So I install the connector like this and now 
what I need to do is to connect the 10 pin connector on the HDCV88 and then I just need to put the board in the rack itself and it's done. So now that the board is installed in the rack we can take a look to the different connectors on the front panel plus uh, the different indicators. So first we have here the 8 gate outputs uh, which are used to generate uh, classical gate signals uh, to control ADSR for example but they can be used also uh, to generate clock signals or uh, synchronization signals for sequencer like REN stop. Uh, for each of the gate output, uh, we find uh, an LED indicator. And uh, beside the gate output, we find the CV output, which are 16 bit resolution with uh, an output range of 0 to 10 volt. Now we go to the network connectors, which will receive the RTP MIDI uh, protocol messages. And uh, here we find the free L indicator LED to which we will come back later. So now let's take a look to the push button which is located beside this small hole. So first, if we switch on uh, the system, we see that the blue LED is blinking on what, 1 Hz. Uh, when the blue LED is blinking like this, it indicates that the board is running the normal uh, software. So uh, right now it's generating all the signals which goes to the gate and the CV output. So let's connect the network. We see that the link LED goes on, which indicates uh, that there is a valid Ethernet signal. Now if uh, we push the, uh, the push button while the board is restarting, like right now, we see that we get a different uh, blinking pattern when the board is powered. Uh, when we get this blinking pattern, it means that the board is running the bootloader mode and the bootloader mode is used to uh, load uh, uh, either a new version or uh, uh, a different software inside the board. To go back to the normal mode, we just need to switch off the board, then switch on again, and then we go back to the normal operating mode. Uh, this button has also another uh, use. If we push it for more than four seconds, and we wait until the blue LED goes uh, fixed, then we make what is called factor reset, which means that the board is loaded with the parameters which are used when the board is uh, delivered uh, out of the factory. And the last thing is that if we push on the button for a little bit more than one second and we release it, then we get uh, a software reset. Okay, so now that the board is installed, we can configure it and mainly giving it an IP address. Uh, so this can be done by the Kissbox editor or the RTP MIDI editor, which are both available for free on the Kissbox website. Uh, the only difference is that if you use the Kissbox editor, uh, you will not get uh, a lot of details about the HDCV88. So it's, it's enough to change the IP address, uh, like what we are doing now. So let's start the Chrisbox editor. Uh, just check that you have a correct version. So you need a version 10.5.0 minimum on the Macintosh and 9.9.0 .9 on the Windows platform. Otherwise the HDCV88 is not recognized properly. Okay, when you make a factory reset, like what we have done just before, uh, any Kissbox product takes the um, default address 192.168.0.253. So the first thing that we have to do is to connect to the board using the default IP address. And so let's enter 253 here. Yeah. And we add the board to the configuration. Of course, you have to do it only one time. Huh? Once the board is configured, it's, it's done. You don't have to do it each time. So we see that the board is detected to the 253 address. So now if we click on the uh, tree, we see that uh, we can display all the network's parameters which can be used by the HDCV88. So for example, let's take the address 100 for the HDCV88. And now if we upload the configuration, we see that the module has restarted. And to make sure that it has taken everything into account, let's type the new IP address of the board, add it, and we see 
right now it's coming we see that the board is found at the new IP address if we make a double click you will uh, see that we get some extra parameters uh, the application profile is not useful in the case of the HDCV 8.8 you have to switch to Mac OS 10 uh, even if you are running on uh, with a Windows platform uh, same thing for the RTP configuration, it's not used. The only thing which is uh, very important is the node name for the RTP station, which will be used to display the module in the plug and play configuration. Okay, now that the board is completely configured, we can make a small demonstration about the uh, latency that you can get with an RTP MIDI device. If you go to the utility on the Macintosh platform, you can find a tool which is named Audio and MIDI Configuration. It's not a tool provided by Keysbot, but, but by a Apple. Uh, when you click, when you start on this application, you will find this window on which you find Nikon name Network. When you click on this icon, you see uh, a panel, control panel, which displays the different uh, devices which are uh, available for an RTP MIDI station. And here we see uh, some devices which have been statically defined entering an IP address and port. Now, if we connect the HDCV88 that we just configured before, we see that without doing anything, it appears automatically in the control panel. So right now we, I'm going to connect uh, to it and what we see is that the uh, control panel measures the uh, latency that we get with the HDCV88 uh, and we see that it displays that we have a latency of 0 milliseconds. So right now it's not really the value, it's just because the, the software cannot display the decimal value and the real latency that you got with an HDCV88 is around 100 microseconds. So the thing is that it does not display 0.1 millisecond, but only 0 millisecond, which is extremely good.